What's happening, Fish and Friends? I get a lot of requests from folks asking, Debo, when you get new tackle, can you show us what you got and why you got it? So I happen to have an order from Tackle Warehouse here, so I'm going to tell you what I got and why I got it. Starting with this tackle bag. For those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that I carry the Tackle Warehouse backpack, and I love that thing. It's been very sturdy. Highly recommend that to any of you bank anglers out there looking for a new tackle bag. But I got this because if you've seen the back of my car, I keep extra lures and stuff back there. That way, you know, if I go to a pond or a lake and I need to switch out stuff, I can take my bag back, switch out some lures, and get back going. They had it on sale for the 4th of July sale, and I see a lot of the same stuff in this. Some good components, you know, for example, the way it attaches here, it's metal. It's got the metal clips that attach to the bag. I like that. The shoulder strap here is padded and it's got like a patch of rubber here so it's not to slip off your shoulders when you're carrying it around. It's got a plethora of pockets on here, the side, the front, and the back, which I really like. For those of you, you know, when you're fishing and stuff, you want to switch out lures, don't ever put a lure that has wet hooks away in your box. That moisture stays in there and it's a good chance you're going to rust out all the hooks in your box and ruin your lures. So that's why I like these rubber pockets here. They're rubber so the hooks don't stick to them. It's nice and airy so when you're done with those lures, just throw them in here, let them dry out, and then you can put them away. You can see it's got another one of those rubber pockets inside here, but I like the storage. Speaking of storage, I did pick up a couple more Plano boxes. These are the waterproof ones. I'm going to transition over to all these. Just in case my bag gets wet, all the lures and hooks in here don't get all disgusting. Now these are the smaller 3600 boxes. You can see this is a 5 to 20 box. So if you're buying a box and wondering what that is, that number on there, the 5 to 20, that's how many compartments are in here. So if you don't have any of those spacers in there, it's 5. If you had all the spacers, you could have up to 20 little compartments. I like these waterproof boxes because they have good sturdy latches on them. You know, some of those kind of cheaper ones that have just the little tabs in front that, you know, clip open, those break off easy. So I like these, plus they're waterproof. So if you get them around water, drop them in water, good chance you're not going to get all the baits inside disgusting and wet. So I picked up two of those because I may be rearranging my tackle bag. And I'm going to have a what's in my tackle bag coming up soon. I've had a bunch of different people ask for that. I also got a 3700 size box. This is a little bit thicker, you know, taller 3700 size, so it's a little bit deeper in there. And then in the bottom, I just have one of my old 3700 size boxes with some crankbaits in there, just to show you all what it could hold. So if you use these, you know, these thicker, larger 3700s, you can get three of these in there. If you use the 3700s that are a little bit thinner, you could get four of those in here. Otherwise, the way I've got it set up, you could put two of those larger 3700s and then four of these 3600s on top. So you could have six boxes in there if you did it that way. So that's the tackle bag and tackle boxes that I got. But enough of that, let's go take a closer look at the lures I got. Starting with the Stanford Bates Boom Boom Frog. If you're a frequent viewer of my channel, it is no surprise that I love frog fishing. By far my favorite way to catch a fish. And this thing caught my eye because of this deal. This bait is marketed to have a better hookup ratio because of that. It's essentially got the soft furry side of Velcro up on top. When a fish grabs on, you know, they've got those kind of little needle-like teeth. It's supposed to catch there, help keep that frog in their mouth longer so you can get that good hookup ratio. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I wouldn't want to try it, so I picked it up. I also noticed on the bottom it's pretty cool. So when the fish is looking up straight from the bottom, it's supposed to look like a fish eye here. So it's kind of got that white and the orange, which would mimic a bluegill there. Good bluegill imitation, it's a good natural color, so we'll try it out. Pretty cool looking bait, see if it's got a better hookup ratio or not. Sticking with the whole frog idea, I did also pick up a couple of these smaller Spro frogs. I get a lot of people that are newer to frog and saying, Debo, what am I doing wrong? I get a lot of blow ups, but I don't connect. Some of that goes to modifying the frog. I'm a big fan of cutting down the legs, but otherwise I think a big part of that is just downsizing. You know, if you don't have huge giant fish in your area, it doesn't hurt to downsize to a smaller frog like this. Just so you can see it out of the box right there, they've already trimmed up the legs. I usually trim them just a little bit shorter than the head of it. You know, I might even trim these off just a little bit more maybe to there, but it's got the legs that are already trimmed and it's a good small profile. I got this in a white and then in a black belly. I don't pay attention to the top color on the frogs. I pay attention to the belly, a white, a black, or something with chartreuse or orange on it here to mimic a bluegill. And just so you can see the size difference there, there's that boom, boom frog compared to this little bro, bro? Bronze Eye Jr. from Spro. Next up, I do listen to all of you out there, and this is something that I've been getting a ton of requests on. This was on sale. This is the Venom Lures version of the Tokyo Rig. Got this in a 3 out and a 4 out version. I know I'm way late to the party in the game on the Tokyo Rig. It honestly was something that didn't really interest me. Kind of mimicked a drop shot, and if you watch my channel, you know I'm not a biggest fan of a drop shot. But this year, I've become a lot more comfortable with it, so I figured, you know what? Let's pick up one of these and try it. The Tokyo Rig is nothing more than an EWG hook here. A split ring connected there with a wire hanging down. That's what you put your weight on. Man, that's a pretty small swivel. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to throw this on a medium heavy. Heck, you could probably even use a heavy, but 
That swivel is pretty small. I guess that's the nice thing about the split ring. You could just change that out and put your own swivel on. So there it is, the old Tokyo rig. Comment below and let me know if you all have used this. I've had a bazillion people ask me to get one and try it out. So I guess I'll be getting it and trying it out. I don't know how to use this thing. I'm going to have to look up some information on it. I don't know if you just reel it at a steady retrieve. Maybe you hop it. Maybe do some sort of cane walk with it here. Anyway, that's the Venom Lures Tokyo rig. I think they call it their Venzilla rig. I don't know about all that. Tokyo rig. I also stacked up on a bunch of terminal tackle. So first off here you can see I got some of these larger centering pin springs. These are great if you like to fish swim baits, you know those belly weighted swim bait hooks. Sometimes the spring in front, the screw lock is kind of small and it tears out the front of your, you know, the bait, the nose of your bait and then you got to bite it off. Then it doesn't seem like it wants to run true. What that means is that's more wire to screw into the nose of that swim bait and hold it so it's a lot less likely, you know, to just pull out on one fish. And it's also got the centering pin there so you don't have to worry about trying to, you know, get that corner to dig in. You just push that into plastic and start screwing. Speaking of that old drop shot, they had some of these finesse hooks on sale. I had a couple people recommend these and saying the size one is the absolute best. Um, these were on sale. I don't know how much they are normally, but these are supposed to be the tournament grade. Not that I'm a tournament angler at all, but they're endorsed by Aaron Martins. They got to be good. That dude's like a king at drop shot. He makes me look like a mere infant with the drop shot in my hand. But anyway, just some drop shot hooks, light wire, size one. Speaking of those split rings, I grabbed a couple packs of these. Um, number two or number three is what I use most of the time. And those are just to replace the small crummy ones that you get on a lot of the baits. Again, with the whole drop shot deal, I got some more hooks. I only had one pack of hooks like this and they were in a, a size one knot. So when you hook this hook in the nose of the bait, you know, you debug you're being lazy, show them. Let's get this baby open. There we go, now we need a soft plastic. So just to give you a better idea of how they work, you put that hook in normally like that and you just get the front of the bait like so. Run your hook back down through just past that plastic like so. When you keep that little piece of plastic there, that little rebar holds it on so it can't get pulled down. So every time you know you catch a fish, it's not pulling that completely down your hook. So it's supposed to hold it there. That way you can rig your drop shot nice and weedless just like that. I also got another pair of split ring pliers. So for those of you that don't know, when you change out your split rings, that tooth fits in the split ring like that, opens it up. That way you can change your treble hooks out quick. So if you're somebody that doesn't really like to change treble hooks because it's a pain in the butt, get one of these. It's also got a little braid cutter there on it, kind of a multi-purpose deal. Gonna keep that in the backpack and change out hooks when I need to. Got a little tub of Shimano grease. Uh, a lot of you ask what's a really good grease to use on all your reels when you do that. I uh, definitely recommend this. I've used this before but ran out, so I was trying some other stuff, but there it is, just a tub of grease. How about these? Got a number of these. Now, one of my confidence baits in the summer is definitely a swim jig. I want to stock up on some of these. I have not used their finesse swim jig, which just means it's got a little bit lighter wire hook. Happen to have one open here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can see here this hook is not, you know, a very thick heavy wire. I can bend that with my fingers there. See how much that flexes? I could probably bend that out if I wanted to, but you know, lighter wire hook so you can use this on a medium power rod. You don't want to have a big, huge, fat swim jig hook. You know, if you're using a medium power rod, you're just not going to get that penetration. You're going to miss fish. So these are just a little bit smaller profile jig. They're a little bit smaller. You could even trim that skirt to make it a little bit smaller profile. If you're fishing a highly pressured, you know, lake or pond, a swim jig like this is already finesse. You go into a little bit smaller size and you get even more finesse. Now these are from Nichols Lures. I love their stuff. They've got some really good products and they've got a cool little keeper here. So you can see the, the keeper that keeps your soft plastic. It's got a hole in it and that hole is for a toothpick. So after you put your soft plastic on there, you take the toothpick, push it through the plastic and in there. And what it does is it keeps that piece of wood across in there for it to hold it. You just break the toothpick off and you've got a little keeper in there. And that's fine with me because I always carry toothpicks with me. There's a bunch of different things you can do with them. So those are the finesse swim jigs from Nichols Lures. I also picked up some crankbaits. I got some of these square bills. I hadn't seen these before. These are from Lunker Hunt, the Shock 2.5. Now these are floating. I get a lot of people asking, you know, I fish a square bill in my, my, my lake or pond or whatever, but it seems to always dig down in the rocks and get stuck or in the wood and get stuck. With a square bill, you want it to bounce off stuff. You don't want to have a square bill that's digging too deep. You know, if you're fishing four feet, you don't want a square bill that goes to six feet because it's going to be digging down the dirt in those rocks and there's a good chance you're going to get hung up, especially from the bank. You can see this is a floating lure, which is important when you're fishing from the bank. You can pop it free and allows it to get out of those rocks and float up. But it's also a 2.5 diver, so it only dies to about 2.5 feet, which is important when you're fishing a shallow pond, you know, you're casting parallel to the bank. There's a good chance you may only be fishing in two, three feet of water. So you want something that's going to match that. Or if you're fishing over some vegetation, you know, if you've got fishing five feet of water, but that vegetation is growing up to about three feet, 
You can get something like this and run it on mono so it's only going about two feet down. You can fish right over the top of that grass. So that's the Lunker Hunt Shock 2.5. I got three colors here. Silver side, that yellow there, which is called Shock Yellow, and the white and silver there, they call that Mandarin. Next up are some soft plastics. I actually didn't get these from Tackle Warehouse. I just threw them in the bag because I got them a little while ago, but I've had a bunch of people asking me about these. These are from Beast Coast. I love their stuff. This is the Creep 6.5. So this is a large swim bait. I'm really excited to throw this this fall. I think I had this one open to look at it. There we go. Excited to throw this this fall because the Miyagi, which is a smaller version of this, absolutely got crushed for me last year. Because if you've watched my show in the past, you know I'm a big fan of the Beast Coast Miyagi, which is just a smaller version of this. So this is a larger bait you can see there, a larger paddle tail. Hopefully go after some of those larger bites. You all know I pretty much catch dinks. Once in a while I catch something large. We'll see how this thing does. They recommend using an 8-aught swim bait hook. I don't have any of those. Hopefully a 7-aught will do for me, but pretty cool looking soft plastic. Got that baby in two colors, the Dope Gill, which I love, and AR's Big Sexy, which is Alex Rudd. That's his color. That sexy shad does amazing in my lake, so we'll try those babies out. Also from Beast Coast, I got some of their Marauders. This is their new kind of Texas rig chunk craw looking deal. This is a really cool bait because it's unique. It's a little bit different from the others on the market. You can see there it's got two really long flapping appendages there, and those kick on the way down. It's got the rib body that I like, you know, similar to the D-bomb. It's got the little legs there that move, but the important part is it's thick here and here, and that's exactly where you'd rig that with a Texas rig, you know, so if I was just fishing this with, you know, a little quarter out weight, flipping and pitching this around, you know, instead of having the ribs all the way around, you know, the little tiny body in between, that can kind of tear out. So, you know, they thought about this when they put the full body here and here just to make it last a little bit longer. Got those babies and green pumpkins. So we will see how they do. Pretty cool looking crow bait. You could throw this on the back of a jig, but I'm just going to fish these as a Texas rig, throw them around some wood and rocks and see what we can catch. So again, that's the 4.25 inch Beast Coast Marauder. And whew, man, those babies got some stank on them. Another soft plastic I got in here is from Reaction Innovations. This is new. This is the Spicy Beaver 4.0. Absolutely love the Reaction Innovations products. The Pocket Rocket that they sell, which is kind of their version of the stick bait, is by far my favorite stick bait on the market. Then they put out these guys. These are super cool. These remind me of the Rage, what is it, Rage Menace? I think if my mind proves me right, Rage Menace. I love using those on the back of a swim jig. So I got some of these, and these are a little bit bigger. So these are going more of the full size swim jig. But you can see that they've got the legs there. They have little shelves on them there. Those should catch a lot of water and do a really strong kicking action, which is nice because you can take a, a swim jig, you know, put a real subtle trailer on it and make it, you know, real finessey. Put something like this on it and you can still get a good, you know, louder vibration out of a bait that's kind of finesse for moving baits, you know, compared to a chatter bait or a spinner bait. It doesn't have a bunch of crazy vibration and flash on it. And I think that's why the swim jig has been effective for me is because it's just natural. Ha! They even put spicy beaver on the back. Well, we'll see how these things do. You can even fish them as a Texas rig. Um, I got the white, you know, for my white swim jigs. I also got green pumpkin and payback, I think, was the other one. But the others were on back order, so I'll get those some other time. That, again, is the Reaction Innovation Spicy Beaver. That's in the white trash color. Classy. The next soft plastic that I got, I was a little let down when I got these. When I looked at them on Tackle Warehouse, they looked cool. I wonder if they were going to be something new. But after I got them and opened them up... They kind of remind me of something else that's already out on the market. Look at that. You can see these are the Super Salt Plus. If you're ever buying Zoom products and you want to know if they're going to float or if they're going to be the salted, just look up here. If they have the Super Salt Plus, they're not going to float because they're going to have salt in them. These little guys are just over three inches, and I got them for some of the Ned Rig heads that I got. I've got some of those EWG Ned Rigs. I'll have to show you all some of those. But, you know, instead of having the exposed open hook like a normal Ned Rig, you know, where it sticks out, it's got an EWG hook on it so you can rig that baby weedless. And the interesting thing is, I've got one of these. This is a 4-inch Yum Dinger. Man, do those babies look pretty much like the same thing? That's why I'm a little bit disappointed. You hold it like that. It's like the same deal. It's just a little stick bait made to be for Ned and... Did I even tell you what it was? It's the Zoom Beatdown. Comes in a 10-pack. Get your act together, Debo. Tell them what it is first. The Zoom Beatdown, I don't know. We'll see what it is, but it looks just like, well, here. Bite the top of that off, and there you go. That's what it looks like to me, but we'll see. Got that in green pumpkin with purple and gold flake, and the uh, the blueberry, which is black and blue. 
I got a couple baits that are similar to a chatterbait. I had a, a couple individuals recommend these. I had never even heard of them. These are called the Trickster 2. So they give you a soft plastic paddle tail with it, and that'll be your trailer. The front of it there looks like a scrounger head, so you can see it's cupped. And I thought this is going to be hard, but it's like a rubber, a soft rubber. And it's got a free swinging head. Moving back from there, it's again got that screw keeper, so you can see what I was talking about there. See how that's kind of thin? That's a perfect chance to show you what I was talking about before. You can see these large centering pin springs on the right. A whole lot more meat there to grab with that compared to that little guy. Which one do you think is going to rip out of that swim bait head first? So this should be nice. You know, unlike the chatterbait that has that exposed hook, I'm the king of losing chatterbaits around wood. They do not play nice with wood. But once you rig this baby up, you put that screw lock in. I'm being lazy again. I'll just show you. That is what it looks like when you get that baby all rigged up. So you can see that hook point kind of sets down. You don't even have to expose that. You can just lay it flat there. That thing is completely weedless. So you can run that over wood, you know, large logs. It's not going to get caught like a chatterbait will. So I don't know how loud or, you know, hard of a vibration it's going to have with that plastic rubbery nose lip on it. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see how this does and compares to the chatterbait. And I've got a few others that I want to compare. That's going to be in a video coming up. Again, the Rick Clun Trickster 2. Kind of cool. This is the final item in the box. I saved this for last because this thing looks absolutely crazy. This is the Tackle HD HD Helgramite. You can see on the back there that it says HD, which is high def. And this thing is truly high definition. Does it smell too? It smells kind of like licorice. This thing is supposed to be used on a shaky head. <laughs> this thing looks awesome. Those little tiny things there, I can only imagine, are going to complete. Look at that. Those little things are definitely going to dance in the water. And if you've got a place that's highly pressured, I do believe that, you know, the more realistic and lifelike you can get something that looks, and that thing almost creeps me out. It looks so lifelike. Very, very cool little bait. Interested to try this. Going to put this on a shaky head. See if we can get anything to eat that. Heck, you could drop shot this thing too or throw it on a, you know, a mojo rig, which is kind of a downsized Carolina rig. Definitely some cool stuff you could do with it there. Those ribs, I'm sure, are going to displace water. Very cool little bait. So that will do it for the night, folks. Comment below and let me know what you're most excited to see. You know, is it these big 6.5 creeps, the little shock square bill, this HD Helger mic? Comment below and let me know what you're most excited to see me take out and fish. I like trying new stuff out. Heck, something like this, you never know. You might find a diamond in the rough. It's fun for me to test this stuff out so I can let you all know what I think of it, if I have success with it or not. And I love hearing back from all of you. So if you've fished with any of this stuff, also comment below and let me know. But it is getting late. I got to get to bed. So... Thank you for watching, and of course, until next time.